All right. So our next ID unit for uh, Minnesota native species are going to be uh, staying in the reptile class. We're going to talk all about snakes that you'd see in, in Minnesota. So Minnesota snake ID, here we go. Jumping into number one is the brown snake. Um, brown snakes are relatively small snake. Um, it's brown with kind of a lighter brown stripe down the center of its back. Here's here's a zoomed in picture of it. Um, I, I kind of noticed those light brown dots. I'm um, sorry, light um, black dots that you see kind of going through the body of the snake. I think that helps um, identify it. Um, and, and they're they're small. They're they're right around a foot uh, long in size, so it's not a large snake. Um, it's gonna mainly eat snails, slugs, worms, some small frogs in there. So brown snake. Uh, you see its range, it likes to hang out in that deciduous forest biome. Snake number two is a bull snake. We're going from a, a relatively small state snake to a large one. Okay, these ones can be from three to six feet in length, and it is a long snake. Um, it has kind of that straw yellow color to them with this brown and then working its way to black blotches. Um, so if you look by the head, it's a lot of kind of that, that brown blotches. And then as you work your way to the tail, it's almost like black bands going down there. It has a yellow head with a pointed nose in there. Um, Non-venomous. Uh, these are going to be constrictors. We actually only have one venomous um, snake that's going to be on the presentation today. So the bull snake, also known as the gopher snake, because they like to eat a lot of gophers. Here's its range. Once again, likes to kind of hang out in that deciduous biome in that kind of that Mississippi River um, area there and it's found mainly west of minnesota so you see look midwest has it and then out west and up into canada as well that's the gopher snake or the bull snake number three the common garter snake this is one if you've seen a snake out in the wild it was probably a common garter snake they're very popular they're well known um they're they're medium sized they can actually be up to three feet in length um normally you see them kind of in that two foot range um they are black with three stripes running um, the length of its body. Sorry, I checked my headphones there. Um, and they like to eat small mammals, insects, and frogs. You see that their range is throughout um, the state of Minnesota. They actually, they do quite well here. Um, there's a video, I can't play it here for you, but there's a video in the uh, PowerPoint that talks about um, their breeding grounds up in Canada and how there's thousands of them concentrated together um, in, the, in some of the seeps up there. So um, number four is the Eastern Hognose Snake. Once again, very similar range to a lot of the other snakes that we've seen. Uh, this one's a toad eater, so it likes to eat frogs. Uh, and then if you look here in the picture, when it gets threatened, it actually will flatten out its head and throat to make itself look bigger. You see how it's, the scales almost look like you can see like the skin behind the scales almost because it's flattened its head up. Um, it hisses. It's actually a bluff. When it is being attacked, it will play dead. Uh, it's a darker brownish, maybe like a little forest green in their snake. And it's got these two black blotches behind its eyes there. So Eastern Hognose Snake is number four. Number five, the Eastern Milk Snake, found pretty much in Southern Minnesota. Um, milk snakes are he um, here. They have kind of these, kind of a, a, a milky color to them with these very noticeable reddish orange um, blotches throughout. Um, and it goes to those red and orange spots are outlined in black. Um, they can be two to three feet long. And if you look at its head, man, it's not a great picture of its head. Do I have a picture of its head? No, I don't. Um, it's got a little uh, light gray V on the back of its head. Um, and these things will eat a variety of different prey animals. And they're actually one of the few species that will actually go and eat other snakes as well. Number five is the eastern milk snake. Number six, you don't see this one a lot. Found mainly in that Mississippi River Valley. Um, and there's North American Racer. It is, once again, a, a bigger snake, so three feet up to five feet in length. Um, it has kind of this blue, green, grayish um, look to it in there. It's more yellow as you look on its body. Uh, populations have declined in the Midwest. Um, they're in the U.S. population, they're, they're very isolated species. And so they fear that there's not a lot of genetics being shared um, throughout the North American racers there. Number seven, 
uh, northern water snake. So this is one that you will see in bodies of water. It has some the dark spots on it with some of these lighter kind of faded um, bands in there. And since they're in the water, they're going to eat things that you'd expect. They'll eat frogs, they'll eat small turtles, they'll eat fish. Um, and they actually, they swim around with their mouth open in order to catch fish and tadpoles. So it's kind of a funny looking thing. Uh, it's a two to three foot um, snake. Its range is very similar to the other snakes that we have seen um, thus far. Number eight. Uh, the rat snake, all right, this just barely made the cut. If you look at the map there, just only in those those two most southeast counties in the uh, um, state, which happens to be an area I spent some time in. They're more common further south in Minnesota. They're long. They're, you know, three and a half to six feet in length. They have a really dark body pattern. So if you look at that um, picture on the left there, it's a very dark body with kind of a, a yellowish or creamy um, underbelly to them as number eight the rat snake number nine these are the smallest snakes in minnesota they're the red belly snake if you look down in the bottom right that is a um a snake in, in someone's palm of their hand so a maximum size of eight to ten inches or so a really small snake um, it's going to eat mainly insects and worms uh, and there's two different colorations that come with it um i should know the difference between the two like why why the two different colorations i do not might be a seasonal thing I'm not sure on that, um, but they are found throughout the entire state. So the red belly um, snake is number nine. Number 10, the ring neck. This one's a little easier for us to identify. It's got that nice orange um, ring around its neck, hence the name ring neck. Uh, it lives in the eastern forest. So if you look here on the eastern parts of the state, uh, it's got this real pretty kind of yellow orange um, belly to it. Um, it's also going to eat small snakes, insects, worms. Sorry, it is a small snake, my bad. Uh, it eats, eats insects, worms, salamanders. Uh, so again, some small prey there for the ring neck snake. Number 11. Once again, a convenient one because it um, its name is what it looks like. So the smooth green snake. Um, and it's the only green snake that Minnesota has. That helps us out quite a bit. Um, it also likes to eat spiders. And it'll hang out in the grasslands of the western parts of the state. Uh, you might also hear them called grass snakes before. Uh, the western fox snake. Let me move my face here so you can see its head. Um, the western fox snake is a long snake. It looks like the gopher snake. Um, the difference here is that it's going to have this very bronze head to it. If you look, it doesn't have any markings on it. It's it's almost it looks metallic looking. Um, up to five feet in length. It's going to eat mice, birds, small mammals. Um, and once again, it, it's reminiscent of the gopher snake, but a little smaller. It's got that bronze head, and its, it's coloration is a little bit different, too, there. And then 13, I think 13 is our last one. It is um, the only venomous snake found in Minnesota. That is the timber rattlesnake. All right. Timber rattlesnake is found in the southeast portions of the state, kind of in that driftless area where uh, you're going to have a lot more exposed rock faces for them to get warmth, those kind of things. So it has a rattle. Uh, it's 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 pretty good at letting you know that it's there. Uh, if it's a juvenile one, like a, a baby rattlesnake, it might not rattle as um, loudly. But definitely the adults, if they think you're getting too close, they will um, kind of use that rattle as a warning. They don't want any piece of you. Uh, and so they're more interested in scaring you off. Um, so it's got this rattle and its head is very triangular shaped. Eh, it's not a great look at it, but it's got a wide kind of almost triangular shaped head with a skinny neck behind it. And it has that because of the venom glands that are found in there. Um, but that's um, one way to identify it. And it's got these sensory spots um, kind of beneath and below the um behind the nostril there. So timber rattlesnake, look for that kind of that triangular shaped head as you go for our, and that is going to wrap up our Minnesota snakes. So 13 of them that we're going to focus on.